My book is here, whipping debts ass. Are you broke? Do you feel broke? The age that you are and where you are in life. Do it align with your bank account. Are you robbing Peter, Paul, John, and the entire Bible just to live? In my book, Whipping Debts Ass, let me tell y'all. I specifically outline the details of what I went through, how I was $50,000 in debt and I gave myself 12 months, one year y'all, and in 11 months, I was able to get out of $50,000 in debt and that debt was only three cars and three credit cards. Those six items was killing us. Whipping Debt's Ass is a quick read book. You can find it on Amazon for you Kindle readers. It's available on Kindle and my website, StanellaMoneyTherapist.com. The link to purchase the book is in a bio. Budget, save, invest, and live. Six years ago, my wife took nothing but an ideal and faith and turned it into a multi-million dollar business with multiple streams of income. As a woman possessed, she overcame all obstacles and created multiple streams of wealth that has impacted our family for generations to come. From mental health professional, to therapist, to author, to CEO, she is a constant reminder of the grace of God over her life. Get ready to listen to and take notes from Stanel, the money therapist, as she schools you on money entrepreneurship, and life skills that was not taught. No more excuses. Wake up! Welcome back to No More Excuses, Wake Up, where we talk about money, entrepreneurship, and life skills that was not taught. I am your host, Danelle Myers, also known as Danelle, the money therapist. This week, we are discussing, again, money. We are on this money train, y'all, because y'all are going to understand your money with my book, Whipping Debt's Ass. Having a relationship with your money is really important. My book, Whipping Debt's Ass, will definitely help you because I am in the ring whipping that ass. And I don't just say whipping that ass to say it. I really whip that ass. My next chapter, which is my third chapter, my breaking point. And as I describe, I'm teaching you me in the beginning of the books. In the beginning of the chapters, you are learning about me. You're learning about everything that I went through before I dig into actually teaching the actual steps. I want you to have a relationship with the author and I want you to be able to understand her and everything that she went through from where she was into where she is now today and with my breaking point and just reading this book this chapter again because I have other things in my life and reading it it sparks up my memory because listen I wrote this book back in 2017 2018 And it's 2022 and this book would have been out if it wasn't for the pandemic. I had, you know, my mom, she was in Virginia. I moved her to Jersey, now Florida. I'm a 100% caregiver as well as a business owner, as well as a financial person. It's not the easiest thing. But when I read this in this chapter, in chapter three, it starts off by saying I was a single mom of three children with a master's degree, working as a therapist, a supervisor at an outpatient mental health agency. Yet I was still struggling to keep up with the gas and electric bill and put food on the table. That's real talk. I would constantly find myself asking my nieces if they could spare their EBT card, the electronic benefit transfer. Yes, EBT. For all y'all know, EBT. Yes, food stamps. Whatever, however you want to say it, that's what it was, okay? So I can get food at the beginning of the month. So everyone who understands the struggle will understand this calculation. 150 for 300. 150 for 300. You know what that mean, right? (laughs) You know what that mean, 150 for 300. So I'll give you $150 cash if I can use $300 of your EBT card. I... (laughs) Come on, y'all. That's what my spreadsheet about is for people to have EBT cards too. People that don't is on welfare. Let's get it straight. I wanted to be real as I possibly could be with where I've been and actually where I am today. 
And speaking of welfare, I remember when I applied, my mom worked for child support. My mom was like, you're never going to come down here. You're never going to, you never, like, I, I better never see you. And when I went to go apply for welfare, the lady said to me, you don't qualify. She said, but you don't need it. She said, you just don't. You have too much in you. You'll never get on it. And honestly, let me tell y'all, I'm just going to touch on this, this is not in a book, but this is in me. So it's an imaginary book, maybe the next book. What's in you is what's in you. And a lot of times when, when we go to those means and, and getting on welfare and getting that assistant and that government assistant, it's really the mindset of where we live in our communities, in our environment. And that wasn't me. And she was 100% right. But where I was, in my environment, asking for help, that's what was going on at the time. But it wasn't me. That wasn't the me. And I'm telling you, that's not the you. It's just making me think in this book. And I said, that was a very difficult time in my life. Although I am in a different place now. I would still use that bad boy if my nieces needed extra money. Uh, yes, yes, sir. Sure would. I still got two EBT cards. I got my EBT cards just in case they want to put some money on it for school, free school lunch. I'm going to use it. There is no shame and it doesn't matter how much money you have. You are who you are. I am who I am. But that was my breaking point. I also want to touch on a part of the book where I said, this was my monthly struggle each year until tax return time. And I know you can see yourself in this. I said, you see, in my culture, the income tax check is like the second coming of Christmas. January 2nd rolls around and you're already planning to go on vacation, buy furniture, buy clothes, make a down payment for a car and all other non essential spending you can do with a surplus of income. Year after year, I find myself using my precious tax return check to dig myself further into debt. And let me tell you, that's what you do. So when you get your, your tax return, you take it, you say, all right, I'm going, I have my tax return check. We don't budget and we don't plan that. What we do is we go and we utilize it and we spend and we get ourselves back into a hole because your tax return is something that you should be using to help you with that down payment for your house. So you don't have PMI. PMI is private mortgage insurance. Maybe if you saved your tax return, let's say your tax return $8,000. Maybe if you saved that $8,000 for four to five years, you won't have private mortgage insurance. But instead, our culture, society, TV, social media, and you yourself want more. You see the lavish lifestyle and you want more. So then you are on this roller coaster because now you getting ready to go to Dubai, which you can't afford to buy. Yes, I am preaching. Can't afford it. Stay home. And now you're going to Dubai and you in Dubai, you didn't charge it. Now the, the, well, the credit card that you paid off, you didn't charge it and you back on this cycle. And that's the problem. And that's where I was. And that was the problem. And I took that same mentality into my business. And that's a problem. So for all of you that are trying to start a business and want to start a business, if you don't change that, it's not really a business, it's a hobby. And I think that was my, that's why I said, I'll give it all up. Because I'm not in here to be do a hobby. I need to see these digits. I need to see this money. I need to see the net profit after everything is paid. After my payroll is paid. After all the expenses and everything that come out. Everything, you know, the rent for the building. Everything is paid. What is my bottom line? If my bottom line is $1,000, we have a problem. It's a hobby. If my bottom line is $5,000, we still have a problem. It's a hobby. Because I knew where I wanted to be. And I knew that I had to get there by changing the way I thought. And I don't play games when it comes to money. I don't play games when it comes to my families that we serve. I do not. I would tear something up because I don't like disrespect. And I don't play games when it comes to my families. I don't play games when it comes to my kids and my schools. And I don't play games when it comes to my personal children or money. I had to really think about it, even reading this and, and what was my breaking point. In the book, I said, one day I said to myself, I can't do this anymore. The cycle of paying, charging, paying, charging, creating debt in both my personal business endeavors. And that's what you're doing. And that's what we do. We go ahead and we look at this income tax check as a free all. And it's not. We didn't get out of cycle. I said in my book, it was a 
It was a cycle because for eight years of, of my marriage with my husband, we found ourselves back in credit card debt doing the same stupid damn thing. And that's what we do. We do the same thing. And I'm here to tell you, don't do the same thing. It's going to lead you in the same way. And I have over at the time, I have over 20 employees. I had two business, businesses relying on me, and I just had a lot of weight on my shoulders to run the business and make sure that I could afford payroll because <sighs> payroll is real. And guess what? Everybody got to get paid before the boss because they got to feed their families. I got to figure out how my family going to eat. And that's one thing my kids don't understand. I got to figure that out. But my staff going to eat first because I put myself in this. When you have a for-profit and a non-profit, Honestly, if it wasn't for the for-profit, the non-profit wouldn't have been able to survive. That's why in that dream, God gave me two babies and they represented the ministry, which is the businesses, because I needed two, because if you would show me one, it wouldn't have been able to survive. Because when you do it a non-profit, it takes time to get paid. And sometimes you don't get paid for a month or two months. And when you don't get paid for a month or two months, guess what? Your families. Your staff, they have families, they still have to eat. They still have to pay their bills. And that is real, I'm telling you. So if God didn't show me this dream, it, it wouldn't be able to last because the for-profit really funded. A Second Touch really was able to fund joy and, you know, temporarily and be able to be that safe space to be able to have that money as a loan to help it out because joy is, is needed in these schools and in the community. It is really needed. My finances was just all over the place. I was just, oh my gosh, I was all over the place. I was scattered as I don't know what. And that's what broke me. And that's what broke me. That's why I said, mm -mm. my emotions, I was crying. I remember one, one time I went off in the house over clothes and I left and Tony was like, I, I think you need a break. And I was like, I think I do. I'm glad we agree. And I left for like five days because I couldn't think I had so much work to do. When I look at it now, it was like, it was just, it was emails. And no, it was more than emails because I had that. It was my invoices. It was more, but I couldn't get my mind right because it was like I was changing, but nobody in my household was changing. I still had to cook. I still had to clean. I still, and then I'm running these businesses. And, and here I am at the school till seven, eight o'clock. Oh my gosh, I would come home at 7 o'clock because it's an after school program. I would get home at 7 o'clock at night, no food cooked, everybody waiting on me. Then I would have to cook dinner. I said, uh, no, y'all not going to treat me like I'm boo-boo the goddamn fool because that's not going to happen. I'm going to tell you what's going to happen. Y'all nigglets ain't going to eat a damn thing. And I went off. And it was just a lot. And I had to really put a lot of things in perspective. I had to put me first and I'm still learning to put me first. And actually, in this age and stage in my life, I'm putting me first. I am truly putting me first because I'm going through a whole lot and I'm putting me first. But at this time and reading this book, I'm like, damn, that is real. This is some real stuff. And I don't want to unfold, but I need to get it together. And I need to be able to to figure out what's breaking me and not let it break me no more. That's where this book really came alive in this chapter. And I said, my truth is your truth. Maybe not in this form, but I know you can relate to my story. I know you can relate to my pain and my passion. And that's where I am. And I really, in this chapter, all my chapters have money tips. In this particular chapter, my money tip is let your breaking point be your starting point. Create detailed financial goals and execute them with attainable outcomes. If your mental state is not in order and your mind is cluttered, you will not have your finances in order. And in another chapter, I, I show you how to create those goals because you hear goals, 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 goals all the time. But honestly, goals is what really got me to be able to come to a place to where God intended me to be. I needed goals. I needed structure. I needed something. And you too need something. Is it, That's what we need. We need something. The reason why you're on YouTube, the reason why you're on Instagram, is 80%, maybe 80% of people entertainment, but you have that big 20% It's like really trying to learn, really trying to start that business, really trying to create, really trying to change their life, really trying to stop cheating, whatever it is, really trying, really, really, it might be 20%. That's a good amount if you're really trying to do it, right? If you're really trying to do it. Because it's really about your quality. And we all we talk about quantity over quality. And it's really about your quality and what you're trying to do. 
as I read this chapter, I'm like, wow, this is the main reason for our existence. I know my why. My why is to help you get out of debt. Formulate a weekly or bi-weekly or monthly budget. Pull that business out of you. Help you build your faith and set attainable and measurable goals. And that's why I'm here. And this is my chapter. And this is my third chapter. My breaking point. Whipping that ass. No more excuses. Wake up. Thank you for listening to No More Excuses, Wake Up. If you love the show, please subscribe, rate, and review on iTunes or Spotify. To learn more about me and my different agencies and what I do, go to StanelleMyersEnterprises.com. While you're there, check out Money Therapy Institute and watch my video where you will see me doing a little acting, showing you how I fought and kicked down closed doors. You can also click on Stanella Money Therapist and get my free budget spreadsheet. And of course, you can email me at contact at StanellaMoneyTherapist.com. I'm also on social media on Facebook at Stanella Money Therapist and Instagram at Stanella the Money Therapist. No more excuses. Y'all know what y'all need to do. Wake up. Hey, smart people. I have a three-month one-on-one personal or business coaching program. As you all know, I paid off $50,000 in debt in one year. I will teach you how I stayed out of debt using my burner method and personal life spreadsheet I created to fit my lifestyle and keep me on track. You will learn how to understand your money communication style using my financial treatment plan. Also, if you own a small business and you feel stuck with cash flow or feel disorganized, I teach business owners and self-employed entrepreneurs such as yourself to financially maximize your money, build wealth using your business income, and retire working on the business while your business continues to run, such as myself. You can book a call with me. The link is in the show notes.